Okay, hi everybody. This is Ron McKinney with Pata da Photo. Uh, we're doing our latest webinar. We're gonna be talking to some dance studio owners about uh, working with photographers and uh, kind of getting an idea as to um, uh, how they came across to working with their photographers, how to approach them, and, um, and uh, you know, a number of things like that. So the first thing I'd like to do is go around uh, to each of our dance studio owners and uh, introduce yourself. Um, let us know where you're from. You can tell us who your photographer is. And uh, so we'll start with that. So let's start with uh, Joe. Hi, my name's Joe. Um, I am in the suburbs of Chicago, uh, Carpentersville, Illinois, um, depending on traffic, about 40 minutes or so from the city. Um, and my photographer for the last is going in my fifth year owning my studio and um, my fifth year working with Ron. So, um, yeah, I have a pretty small studio, about 50 kids, um, competitive dance company. So, um, and it's great. Okay, Jessica. Um, my name is Jessica Garrett. I own Dynamic Perception Dance Company. We're located in Westmont also suburbs of Chicago. Um, we're going into our 10th season this year. And my photographer is the wonderful Ron McKinney. And we're going on eight years, I think, together. Long time. <laughs> okay, Kim. I'm Kim Davis. I have a studio um, outside of Houston in Tomball. Uh, Texas. Um, I've owned it for 17 years. Uh, my photographer is John Mark Stevenson with Fourth Day Photography. Cool. Okay, Leah? Uh, I'm Leah Vogt. I have um, a studio called Trilogy about 45 minutes south of St. Louis in Peavely. Um, we had just finished up our fifth year and three years ago we also went out into gymnastics and cheerleading competitively as well. And my photographer for the last five years has been Stacy Wright, um, who's been awesome. Awesome. Okay, Gina. Hi, I'm Gina Helverson, and I apologize for jumping on late. Um, I own a studio called KMC Studios in uh, just outside Minneapolis. We have three locations um, of our studio in Minnesota. And I have just come on as an owner pretty recently in the last year. Um, but our studio has been in business for 64 seasons wow. and we, yeah, we use, um, Jenny Ray images, um, with Jenny Utah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So everyone, um, I, I mentioned it before, but I just want to re say this. Uh, if you make a comment, um, please change who you're seeing in the chat to, to panelists and attendees. Um, and, uh, we're going to start like asking, um, our studio owners questions and um, I'm going to be watching the chat channel not the Q&A but the chat channel uh, for any questions so feel free to pop some questions in there and then I will see them and uh, put them to the studio owners um, and I think what I'd like to do is is start off with uh, um, each of you studio owners and Gina, I know you're kind of new to it, but you've still been in the business for a while. So you, can, you don't have to just relate it to, you know, in the time that you've been an owner, but, you know, go back in time as well. Um, but the first question is going to be, um, how, how did you, you know, choose the uh, photographer that you're currently working with and, um, and, you know, like, what are the qualities that you find are most important, you know, in those photographers? And let's just start with you, Gina. Sure. Yep. So we've been using Jenny for as long as I can remember. Um, for us, it was a very easy person to choose because Jenny did dance at our studio. Growing up, she's been with the studio for probably close to 30 years now, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, but over the years, Jenny has taken steps to further her dance photography education. I know she's done a lot of conferences and seminars and she really cares about what we want um, for photographs whether that's for our website or for social media um, or just for the kids and their parents um, she really listens and if we ask something about you know have you ever tried it this way or have you ever tried it that way she always goes and takes that extra mile um, for the training that she needs so for us like I said it was easy because she was a member of the studio I've known Jenny 
for a very long time. So she sort of fell into our lap in a way, but she was always a part of the studio for us. Good, cool. Okay, let's move, uh, let's move over to, uh, uh, to Leah. Um, so actually years ago, I had met Stacy um, through the studio she was teaching at. I actually came down there to teach and we got to know each other. So it was also a natural choice for me. Um, I had already seen her work um, as a photographer and had a chance to work with her as a dance teacher. So it, it was pretty easy. I knew she knew her dance stuff and we got along really well and could run each, uh, you know, ideas off each other. And so she's great because she has her own ideas. I have my ideas. We're able to collaborate and come up with some really cool stuff. And she's constantly researching and, and um, try experimenting on uh, my kids because she's comfortable asking me if I'm comfortable doing stuff with my kids and stuff like that. So um, she's really personable with the kids. She's open to new suggestions, but she's just got such a good rapport with the kids as being a dance teacher already. It made it really easy. Okay. Let's bounce over to you, Jessica. So when we started, we were using a uh, photography in a box. That's what I call it. Like a sports kind of photography. Um, wasn't super pleased with the product because they didn't really know dance. So I wanted to do an outdoor shoot. So I started researching all the photographers in Chicagoland. And Ron was the only one that wanted to offer to come meet with me in person to see what I wanted to do. And that to me was like, that was it. He drove out to my studio, sat down. We talked about everything that I wanted and we had a good conversation. And he made it personal instead of just sending me an email that listed the prices. And, you know, he just he was going to make it personal and we became fast friends. So he can never leave me now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. That's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. Cool. Kim. Yeah. I'm kind of in the same boat as Jessica. I had hired um, like a sports photographer, kind of like school photographer to come in my first few years. And yeah, I just wasn't happy with the product. Um, it was very like point and click and move on. And there was a lot of, little technical things that, you know, if I was, you know, as a studio owner, we get busy and we're walking in and out of rooms and I couldn't leave. Like, I just wanted to make sure that my kids were always looking good and that the product was great for my parents and, you know, stick, you know, really sticky on technique. And um, when, when John Mark walked in for the first time to introduce himself and said he'd been photographing studios, I was right away excited because I knew he knew small, you know, maybe not complete dance knowledge, but he knew what something good looks like and um we hit it off same thing we had a really good conversation about what i was looking for um and from then on he's just been the best and honestly yeah i'm kind of like what, what jessica said he can never leave me because he's so passionate about what he does and he just produces such good work i i think that's one of the key things is is when you have a uh Someone who's actually a dance photographer and passionate about it, once you have that experience with them, it's like, you know, you can never go back to not having a dance photographer. And that's kind of what we're doing here at Pata de Photo is trying to, uh, you know, we're, we're obviously trying to educate our dance photographers and raising their skills, um, you know, just like what we were talking about with Jenny. And, um, um, but, you know, on the other hand, we want to get out to the studio owners and let them know you know, wow, you don't need to use that, uh, uh, that, that, that plane photographer that you were using before, you know, you can, th there are dance photographers out here for you to find. Uh, Joe, can you talk about, you know, your experience? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, it was kind of a no brainer when I opened five years ago, I knew Ron is known in the area. So, um, my studio's, um, pretty close to, to Ron. So, especially when you were in, um, Algonquins, we were, we were really close. So um, Ron's really well known in a lot of the high schools and with dance teams and sports and stuff too. So he was just a real trusted um, photographer. Um, so I knew right away that he was the person I wanted to to work with. But I mean, I think you're looking for what which Ron has is um, you know someone that is creative and dance lines and technique. You don't necessarily have to like have a background in dance but have that eye of what looks good and um, 
how to help the dance. Ron is really good at helping the dancers um, angles and stuff that just brings out the best in what we're trying to get them to do so that the dancers and parents and everybody is happy. So yeah, um, it was a pretty easy decision for me. So glad it worked out. <laughs> and Ron's always willing to learn. Like he's done it forever and he's the best in my opinion of anybody. And he'll still ask to make sure that he's using the term correctly or yeah. like, what does this mean? You know, he's always willing to like learn other things and like not afraid to ask the studio owner, which I think just shows that, you know, how willing he is to do that and make himself better at all times. So I love that. I love that about you, Ron. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um... Um, I, I, I guess the next question, and, and, and let's go back to you, Joe, and start, start with you on this, is how, how would you suggest that another photographer, you know, contact you? Like, like a lot of our photographers are, you know, there's a lot of dance, you know, schools out there and, um, and we need to reach out to them and, and just let them know, hey, we're here, you know, in case they are actually looking, you know, for another photographer. So Joe, what, what would be your suggestion? We'll go down the line again on this, um, on, on how a photographer should reach out to you. Yeah, I mean, for me specifically, um, I'm super active on social media for the studio. Um, I post almost every day, if not multiple times a day. So um, whether you, message or call or email having be, become somewhat familiar with what that studio that you're reaching out to's brand is or you know what it is that they are about and how you think you could help benefit them instead of just like hey I'm a, a photographer and you know I'm looking to work with dance studios kind of get familiar with who that dance studio is that you're wanting to work with um, so that you can Tell them how you can help them specifically, um, just based on social media or their website, um, I think is a good way to make that connection so it feels individualized for them. Okay, cool, thank you. Um, Kim, how about you? I think the biggest um, misconception for me when I get, because I do get a lot of advertisements for photography, um, is I will get people who send me these fabulous dance photos and that's maybe like five percent of my enrollment i have a lot of babies and so especially for recitals so when john mark first approached me he showed me like a two-year-old in a tutu like upside down and i was just like oh my gosh this is the most cutest thing ever and that immediately sold me because 80 percent of my clientele is under the age of eight so um, as much as I love to see beautiful dance work and, and dance photography, I only have a handful of girls that can produce that. Um, I'm really looking for that age, tiny little age group and someone who's going to be patient and efficient, but make super cute dance photos. Cool. It actually makes a lot of sense because it is true. Like sometimes we don't think about it, you know, like our focus is always on the, on the older, more talented you know, dancers who've been around for a while. And, um, um, but, you know, it's, it's the little ones that we have to be able to, to find a way to work with. So, um, Leah, how about you? Um, I'm, I'm with Joe on this one. I feel like if you want the, an opportunity to work with me a little bit more than just sending me prices and this is what I can do, find out what I do and see how you can benefit me. You know, a lot of places, especially with dance, and, and one thing I liked about Stacy is she was like, okay, Leah's branching out. She's doing gymnastics and cheer. How can I benefit that as well? Instead of just coming in and I do dance and this is what I had to offer. She found out those things about me to be able to figure out how she could benefit me. Um, so I, I agree with Joe on that one, yeah. Cool, and Jessica? Um, I agree with the, I mean, we get so many emails from so many vendors that it's just delete, delete all day. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not reading those emails anymore. But if it is the little kids, we know a studio owner is like babies are the bread and butter. Like you have to start here to get up to here. 
So you have to do volume of little kids and it has to be like marketing photos. I don't need 27 pictures of my advanced sleeping. I need a little kid in class. I need like Ron knows the only pictures I post are the ones that he takes for fun with us because that's, you know, what people want. And when we're marketing, it's too intimidating to market our most advanced dancers because a five-year-old can't do that. And their mom doesn't want to pay for that because it's not achievable. So we want that. So I always say, just like he offered to come meet with me, go, go offer to shoot a class for one day and give them 10 pictures they can use in a marketing. And that would just, you know, something that you can give to them and offer something out, I think is one of the best ways. Cool. And Gina? Uh, well, going last, I completely echo kind of just what everybody said, but definitely what Jessica just said about maybe offering to come to a class to showcase what they can do, but also what, what I need as a studio owner as well. Um, mm -hmm. We definitely, for our social media and website, we have a pretty solid mix of our advanced, you know, skills, as well as the little three and four year olds, like somebody said, hanging upside down. Um, you want to be approachable to all markets. If that's what you're trying to go for as your, excuse me, as your studio owner. Um, I think knowing also from my perspective, um, Minnesota and Minneapolis in general is an extremely saturated area for studios. Um, we have many studios in the area. Um, so finding out what a studio or excuse me, what a photographer can do for me that will set my studio apart from what everybody else is doing. Um, because we have so many, we have so much competition within blocks of every studio. Um, how that, how a photographer can benefit me more and set me apart from the other studios because everybody posts pictures of the little ones. So how you can find that mix for me is what's important as well. And that's such a key thing that you just said there, Gina, because it, to me, it's like, you need to separate yourself from the others. And, and, mm -hmm. and that's where I think, you know, a dance photographer can really help out because, you know, this is, this is what we're trained in is, is with dance. And, and so, you know, typically we're used to working with the little ones as well as the older ones. And, and we're able to create images that help your studio, you know, go a little bit beyond what the others are, are doing, especially if they're using, you know, like, like the sports companies like Kim's was and Jessica's was where they're not even dance photographers. They're just pushing buttons and taking pictures, taking snapshots even. Um, you know, another key thing to me is, you know, really the, the, the personality of, of the dance photographer. It's not just, uh, I mean, obviously their ability to understand dance is important um, and their, um, you know, their ability to take the pictures and, 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 and getting some beautiful shots is very important. But, you know, like uh, when you're doing an all day, you know, like a recital portrait shoot or in Joe's case, you know, we're outdoors and, 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 and we're, we're doing all these shoots. It's supposed to be a fun thing, you know what I mean? And, and, and I have heard, you know, from some studio owners, you know, like, like for places where I've replaced a photographer that, you know, the, in the last place, you know, maybe it was stressful or they, they just weren't like, um, I don't know, fun. They weren't really connecting with the kids. And, you know, so if you can kind of like share experiences, you know, about that with, you know, obviously without naming names or anything, but just, just talk about, you know, here's what it was before, here's what it is now. And just talk about, you know, not just the pictures, but what was the personality like? What was the experience like? Uh, does anybody want to jump in on that? Yeah, for sure. Um, the experiences night and day before I had to stand there, ask to see the picture, correct the kid myself, get the next class ready. We're behind on time. This mother is having a flipping out over something dumb. And it was just like so much. And with now, and they would get stressed if we were behind, like they're like, we're, we're behind. And I'm like, well, great. I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you know, like they were getting upset with me that we were behind, but then I'm having to babysit the photographer. So this is why we're behind. So, but now with Ron, Ron doesn't care if we're behind. He's like, eh. and I'm like, oh, thank God. So like that takes that level of stress down because now I don't have to worry about him. He is telling the kids what to do. He knows when it's not a good shot. 
He also knows when to give up. If a girl wants to do something, it's not happening. Ron knows just when to go to the next pose or kindly say, okay, we've got it. Let's move on. But realistically, you're not going to get that picture. You're going to get this picture because you're better at it. So he knows all of those things. And I can walk away, which makes everything go faster. Which he always brings somebody to assist and help talk to that mom about the packages because I don't want to know what your packages are. I want you to walk in and take care of it all. I have enough to do. I don't want to know what you're going to get for package C. The photographer and the assistant can handle all of that or it's handled beforehand, which they do that now, which is way better when it's all online. So that was the difference. I don't have to, I never answer a question to a parent about anything to do with photography anymore. So that's my difference. Cool. Does anyone else want to jump in on that? Yeah, I agree with Jessica and all of those things. Um, for me, even though sometimes the parents might be irritated waiting, their kids come out so excited because they have fun in there. Um, with Stacy, my photographer, um, we're both a little goofy and we know each other. So we work off of each other. So the kids are just laughing usually, and we're having a good time. And if we're having a good time and laughing, the kids are having a good time. So when the kids come out excited, then the parents then let go of the fact that maybe they were a little bit more behind. Um, and with Stacy, she, a parent may insist on some kind of action shot. We both know it's not going to go very well, but they insist. So she will take it and try to get it. But again, she does know when to stop, but she'll post it and give it as an option so they can see they did do it. Yeah, maybe it wasn't right for my kid. Okay. Anybody else want to jump in on that? Yeah, I think um, it's super important to have a photographer that um, knows what the kids need and to help the teacher because if I'm not in the room and I have a new teacher in there and she's trying to do something overzealous with these kids, he can step in and say, this isn't going well. Everybody put your hands on your hips and do something else. Like he has different ideas and, and easy solutions to a teacher trying to do something that's obviously not going to work. And he always shoots two serious and one funny with everything. And I will say nine times out of 10, those parents buy the funny one. Um, and I'm one of those parents. One, one time my kids were taking this beautiful ballet photo and my youngest hopped on my daughter's back, like piggyback, and he shot it and I bought it and blew it up and I love it. It's my, still my favorite photo. So you, you just have to have a photographer that's willing to do those kinds of things because we end up getting some amazing photos out of it. Yeah, our kids always buy the one where they're hugging their best friend. Correct. And that's it. <laughs> or they're laughing or... I mean, and he takes pictures of us, which I think is something that a lot of photographers miss out on, is taking pictures of the staff, of the faculty, fun pictures, goofy pictures, one of each. Like we want updated headshots too. Like we want updated photos. Like the amount of photos Ron has of me being ridiculous is, is high, but I love them. And my mom loves them. You know, our, my kids love them. So I think making sure to like get the teacher to jump in or like tell them in advance, hey, like let's, let's get a picture of your staff because we all want a picture of our staff and like those photos to share. So I think that's big too. Sorry. Okay, anyone else on this? Um, just, well, everybody is kind of saying in a way almost the same thing, but I think for us too, for, for us to feel comfortable with the photographer, but also for the photographer to feel comfortable to give suggestions. Um, I don't want to just sit there and I think Jessica said it. I don't want to be doing everything. I don't want to pose them and then fix it and then check the photo. Um, so knowing that you have that mutual trust is really important um, for me. But that ever, Otherwise, I just kind of echo what everybody else said. Okay. Uh, Joe, you want to add anything to that or we can move on to the next question? You're the only one that I've really ever worked with. Um, but I think for me... Um, we do on location, you know, um, high level dancing, older dancers is, is what we do. And, and they're, the skills that they're doing, um, they're, they're doing really difficult things and they're perfectionists, right? And so I think just having a, a photographer that 
like Ron, who can see like they're frustrated because they, they, they know they're not getting it. They have that awareness. So Ron will try a different angle or just, you know, like just being able to connect with each individual kid because they're, they're really different um, and bringing, being able to see their personality and, and if they're struggling or whatever um, is really helpful. And something Ron does, I don't know if we'll get to this, but is also the last couple of years when we do our, um, our group shoot and it's, it's a long day and it is stressful, but Ron has a way of just kind of making it um, a memory and fun is the videos that you do run um, of kind of, you know, having someone else kind of shoot the kids laughing in the corner, right? And then they get this incredible shot of them doing, you know, whatever, some sort of great skill. So kind of the, the recap of the day and some of the really cool shoots that they got, but then the behind the scenes, like I think it was Jessica was saying like, the kids laughing in the corner or whatever, um, or helping them fix their hair or something. So those other memories that you're making besides those really great shots, so. Yeah, and you know, like you're, you're bringing up a point that I think I wanna go over to at some point in time. And that is that um, dance studio owners have, have different needs. In other words, it's not just recital portraits, you know, it can be, um, you know, uh, it, it, it can be outdoor shots, you know, um, you know, with, with some companies, you know, I do recital portraits, I do the company team portraits, like, like with Jessica, I do both recital and company team, uh, two different shoots, and then I also do an outdoor shoot, and then, you know, sometimes we do these specialty shoots where maybe it's, it's uh, uh, smoke bombs or color powder or, you know, rain or whatever. Um, so there's a lot of different options. I want to bring that up in just a minute, but we've had a couple of questions uh, that come up and I want each of you to kind of like answer this, but just like, just make short answers on this because I think it, it, these are just short answers. And the first one is, uh, and, and Jessica's over there in the chat channel, like already answering and stuff, so that's great. Um, uh, but Brian Balloon asks, when's the best time to contact the dance studio? Um, so if you guys can, can just go down the line, Joe, like if you're going to be, contacted by somebody when's really the best time for you to be contacted daytime monday through friday i i'm at the studio i work seven nights a week and saturdays and sundays i'm at the studio all day all night so during the day for me but but like is there a a time of year that's also important like oh, is it better to contact you know well for me my my and i think for most studios i mean my season starts similar starts similar to school and I do my beginning of the year um, is my annual shot with Ron um, with all the company outdoor, um, which is usually September, October ish. So I'm looking at to set that up or it would be if I wasn't using Ron, um, July, August, summer for me after nationals, we travel, which is um, usually end of June, beginning of July. And then my summer for me is I still offer classes and stuff, but it's my, um, slowest time of the year. So that's when I'm really kind of starting to look and plan for my entire season next, you know, what, what's coming up. Okay. And Jessica, I know you already mentioned summer in the chat box, but uh, go ahead and say that. Uh, yeah, summer. Summer is when we're looking to redo, refresh, um, get new ideas for the next season, what we want to change. So summer is always the best. I would say af uh, July into August for me. Okay. Kim? Yeah, same summer. Um between May and July, because by August, I have my entire season set for the whole entire year. I mean, everything's set, recital pictures, recital venue, everything is done. I, just, I always joke, it's like a wedding. We plan it every year for the whole year. So if you're gonna contact a studio, it's gotta be during the summer because if they're organized enough, their calendar's already done. <laughs> okay, good. Leah? Yeah, I completely agree. July's the best time. By the end of August, I wanna have the year planned out. Okay, and Gina. Yep, end of July and early August, we are pretty much done planning by August 15th. So that four weeks before that for us, definitely. And during the day, yes. Okay, and again, more uh, uh, still looking for short answers, but I'm gonna ask another question. This one from Martha Worth. Um, and that is like, uh, as a studio owner, do you take it seriously when one person absolutely hates their photos, but everybody else loves them? Gina, we'll start with you. No, it's no, never. <laughs> I'll hear somebody out, but no, I don't. I, if, I, if it feels like I need to talk to the photographer, I will, but I'll always look at the photos first. Nine times out of 10, I just will listen to that parent. And okay, thank you for your opinion. That's about it. Okay. 
Okay, Leah? Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, you can't please everybody. Um, and there's always that one or two people. So we know that um, our photography, our photographer has great work overall. And if somebody has a complaint, she's always actually, she's the one who listens to them and um, tries to make them happy if she can. But overall, she's confident with her work. So we don't usually have any issues. Okay, Kim. Yeah, same. We don't worry about it. And usually we know what parent is before they even say the name. <laughs> Okay, and Jessica? Um, absolutely not. Like, if you don't like Ron's photos, like, then don't go <laughs> to that studio. <laughs> okay, and Joe? Yeah, I would say same. Um, it doesn't really happen. If, if, you ha if I did have a dancer that was just having an off day and it came back and just whatever, um, Ron uh, will, does offer to do like a retake, which is just, again, kind of going above and beyond for the studio and studio owner and the dancers. So that's, again, something else that sets Ron, Ron apart. Yeah, and, and, and to be fair on that, I, you, you know, like uh, there have been times that I've done that. A lot of times, especially like a studio recital portrait, like, cause what I do is I tell them, okay, come to my studio and, and, and I'll do a retake because I don't have to leave and I'm all set up. I can just walk over and, and take the shot. So it's easy for me to make people happy that way. You know, and, and, and with outdoors, you know, again, it's, you know, it's kind of the same thing. Um, doesn't happen very often, but sometimes, you know, a dancer has an off day. I mean, they're, they're just off. They're, you know, it's, it's, it's not a good time for them on that day. And, and, you know, and I don't want these pictures that are supposed to represent this year for them to be bad because they had an off day, you know. And so I find some way of like uh, of uh, taking care of them with that. Um, the next question we have, and this is really kind of interesting, um, as, as a dance photographer, you know, I will tell you that when I do recital portraits, I use a white backdrop, I, I bring white Marley flooring, and, uh, and it's very intentional. It's because I, I, I want the focus to be all on the dancer. And, and, and when you, when you, um, I, you know, like I, I do, believe in, in using, you know, color backdrops and, and uh, um, I'm, I'm actually adding a bunch of color backdrops to my studio right now, you know, but that, that is designed to go with a specific look and a specific color. That's the way that I feel about things. And the white just helps the focus be totally on the dancer and their costume, you know, and on their position. Um, but I do hear this question a lot and it's, it's an important question. And, and this is from Janine Bordeaux. And that is that uh, she struggles with mixing up recital backdrops. So pictures aren't the same from year to year. Um, do studio owners have a preference with a particular look or color? Do you want to see it changed up? And, you know, with Joe, we're doing outdoor shoots each year. And every year we do it differently. This year, we're going to go into the city of Chicago. We're going to get a, you know, a downtown shoot, which is pretty exciting. So I'm going to pass on you on this one because you know what, we do it different every year and we're really not talking about backdrops with you. So I'm gonna, we'll go ahead and start with Jessica on this one. Um, yeah, I just want white. I am with Ron, he brings the white, the white Marley, and it does, it leaves the focus on the kid and their costume, especially when they're little. All mom and grandma want is Sally in her big, pretty pink tutu. And it, I think it's distracting. And I actually hate that my first two years were different colors because when I want to display it, it's just messy and like white, just it's classic. It's easy. Yeah. White's best. Okay. Kim. Yeah, it works really well. The white does. Um, at first when he did it the first couple of years, I was like, mm, we're doing the same thing, but when I thought back to when we were changing up colors, it was conflicting with a lot of the costumes we had. So the white, I mean, it really does pop all the colors for the kids. It's, I think for, for I, don't, I can't speak for John Marks, I'm not a photographer, but I know he photo, things Photoshop a lot easier um, and more efficiently when he's doing it on white. And it just looks good for social media. Like when he sends me some that I can use for social media, it just looks really classic and good. Cool. Leah? Yeah, I prefer the white, um, clean, crisp, 
I also think with all the advances in technology, you can take something so much easier off of, you know, a white background and insert it into whatever you want. Um, and as a mom of three, I, when I look on my wall, everything is white except for the year of COVID. We did outdoor shoots. Um, Stacy did them with my girls in particular, and that's the only thing that's not white. And it kind of drives me crazy. They're beautiful, uh, but I, I do prefer white too. Okay, and Gina. So we have actually, we actually own our backdrops that we use for our class pictures. We've owned them for quite some time. They're actually a gray, like watercolor. And if I'm being totally honest, they haven't been my favorite over the last couple of years. And the plan was to change them in 2020. And then, you know, life happened. So we actually are transitioning to the white. I've never hated the gray watercolor backdrop, but I definitely like the white better. And then for our recital photos, we do a theme every year for our recitals. So we have a different backdrop at our recital, but those are more backstage photos and, you know, dancers on the stage. They're not set photos. Um, but I would echo that I think the white is better. We've used the gray watercolor forever, but it's time to retire that, I think. So. <laughs> I, and, and I do want to say that, you know, like, you know, we went across the board here uh, saying white, but, you know, that, that you know, like there's going to be studio owners that uh, prefer something different. I had a studio owner that wanted it in black. And so, uh, you know, my first four or five years with her, I've shot in black. And just this past year, we did white for the first time. And, and, and she did love it. I think we're going to go with white going forward. But I totally understand where some uh, studio owners want to uh, uh, have something different. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. Um, so uh, Angel Tisdale um, asks, how many photo days per year do you arrange, you know, for your studio? Um, do you do it just once for the recital portraits or in Joe's case, the outdoor portraits? Or um, how many different sessions um, does this, do, do you do? And I'm going to actually throw on a, a, an additional question to this, okay? Um, for those of you who do uh, just recital portraits, um, if somebody wanted to reach out to you and, and found out, oh, well, we just do the recital portraits, um, you know, what else would you, you know, would you be interested? Like, could a new photographer, it's sort of like in Jessica's case, when we first got, got together, she decided she wanted to get some outdoor shots, and that, that's how she found me. Um, is that something that a new photographer could, like, like, like get in with. And I, I know that I forget whether it was Leah or Kim, you know, talking about, well, come in and, you know, get some shots, you know, in our studio of our classes or, you know, something like that. So I, I want you to kind of expand onto that as to what are some of the options, you know, that, that somebody can offer to you to do something besides what you may, like if you're already set with a recital photographer, what else can it be? So two questions. One is what, what photo shoots do you do each year? And, um, and then what can somebody approach you with if you're already set with a recital portrait photographer? And let's start with you, Gina. So we do our, um, we do it during the week of like the kids' classes. So we don't really interrupt the week um, like they don't have to come in in a separate day. Um, we set up the the whole studio as a photography studio then because we do own our own equipment. Um, but Jenny also brings in lots of things for us as well. So it's actually just during the kids' class times. And what I would like to start doing this year, and I know that Jenny has done it with some of our other studios that in the area, is offering extra windows of time for kids to do like individual sessions. So they can have a 15 or 20 minute session with just Jenny in there and they can do as many poses as they want. Um, I believe she calls them mini sessions, um, but we are definitely going to gravitate towards that more this year too. But we don't interrupt the, re the we, don't, we don't take a separate day to do it. We just do it during the week of their classes. So if their class is on Tuesdays at five, then their pictures are from five to 5.30 on Tuesday. And so you basically just do recital portraits, is that correct? We do, yep, yep. Okay, okay, and Leah? Um, I think you've got to know your area and your market. I'm in a little bit lower income area, so it's not really feasible for a photographer to come in for multiple shoots throughout the year because our families can't afford it. Um, so we just do stuff for um, recital, but that also acts as our end of year for cheer and gymnastics. 
Um, I would say for me, the only other thing that I may do is split that up into seasons where we're doing it at the beginning of, or towards the end of gymnastics or cheer season, because they all end at very separate times. Um, but Stacy also sends us information when she does mini shoots. So the kids still have options to go and work with her outside of the studio if they want to do outdoor pictures or anything like that. So I think it's really about your market and what is going to benefit both, because I understand as a photographer, not wanting to come in for four kids. Yep. Okay, Kim. Yeah, I have a a whole week of recital photos. Um, we do the same as Gina does during class time. So it goes Monday through Saturday. Um, but if someone else was to come in to do something else, I think the biggest thing for, it's actually on my to-do list, is a social media person. Um, we're really pushing our social media this year. And um, if I had someone that would come in and do action shots of my kids during class time, and they looked really good, I would, I would, I would buy them in a heartbeat to put them up on my website or on my Facebook page or Instagram, because right now I'm relying on my teachers to send pictures and sometimes their stuff's not great. And I know a photographer could come in and sit in the corner of a classroom and take pictures during our three and four year old classes and get better shots than what my teachers are getting. So um, that's a different you know, area that someone else could walk in and sell that to me right now. And I would be like, sold, because that's something that I really need. Yep, that makes sense. Jessica? Um, we do three shoots a year. So we do our fall shoot for our competition dancers. It's always outdoors. Um, every year we do something different, fun. Last year we did like all teal powder because our skew color is teal. Um, then we do our competition team uh, shoot, which is just them in their competition costumes. We have a very large team. Um, and that's usually on a Friday night or a Saturday. And then we have our showcase or recital shoot which takes an entire Saturday so that's just for their showcase costumes okay and Joe yeah so um my studio um I don't really we don't do a recital um we do I would say probably three plus shoots with Ron a year we do one with the entire company which is pretty small it's less than 50 kids um that's in the fall and then we do my um parents do want a lot of variety in their kids photography so we'll do we'll go to Ron's studio um, multiple times throughout the year um, and do specialty shots individually with each kid um, and sometimes we'll have you know 10 to 20 plus kids that want to do that with Ron whether that's the color shoots or rain or just different backgrounds or whatever in studio um, so my parents are definitely wanting a lot of that variety um yeah so something that i've never done that i would like to i think it's beneficial to um for me to gain a more younger um clientele little kids because i don't have i really don't have very many little kids is having a run or photographer coming in and taking action shots of teachers teaching um then my teacher promotes that on her instagram of like how great it was class at artistry on Thursday night. And then that's promoting and all that kind of stuff. And that's something that I haven't done, but um, I mean, I take them myself, but um, like having actually Ron come in and do that, I think is um, another opportunity for photographers to get in. So, you know, it's kind of like an interesting thing, um, you know, what you just said there, because, you know, we definitely need to talk about that and get that going because, you know, as, as a uh, photographer, you know, what I often tell, um, the studio owners is that, you know, I'm, I'm here for you, you know, like, like what kind of, uh, you know, besides just doing your recital portraits, showcase portraits, or going out and doing outdoor portraits or whatever that I'd be selling to the parents, what else can I be doing for you? And, and, and that's really the question is, you know, what more can your photographer do for you besides just taking the picture? And marketing is a huge part of that. And, and I, you know, and so what I tell, you know, my uh, studio owners is that, you know, any kind of marketing shots you want, you know, just let me know. I, I do it and I do it for free, um, you know, because they allow me, you know, to do these recital portraits. It's my way of giving back. Um, and, uh, um, you know, so 
you know, like, like, like some of you have talked to, talked about that, Kim, you know, you talked about, you know, having somebody coming in, you, you know, and uh, getting shots of your classes as well. And I think that's, that's kind of critical. And I, I don't think uh, it's unfair to talk to your uh, recital portrait photographer about doing things like that, because it's something we can do in one day, you, you know, like not even in just one day, but I'm talking about in a couple of hours of one day, you know, and, you know, just like Joe said, we just basically would just sit in the corner and wait for a cute moment to appear and, you know, and, and capture it. Um, what other kind of things uh, can you envision, you know, that, a, uh, that your recital portrait photographer can do to help you? I, I mean, I'm presuming that they're all providing you with the pictures so you can use it on social media throughout the year. You know, what else? And I'll just let any of you jump in. Um, I can go first. Um, so like I said, Jenny's been with us for a really long time. She danced at the studio. So in a way she has a little bit more of an in with us um, because she's known how we work and how we run things. But she started an ambassador program, which I encouraged a lot of our students to join. And she did do that. Um, and they all did that. And then Jenny has in a way, like, because I appreciate her photos so much, I have taken it upon myself to invite her to benefits for parents and this and that. And um, I think now she takes photographs of at least 10 of our families for their everyday photos and their holiday photos. Um, so I think her not being afraid to ask to be a part of things, as well as the trust I have in her suggesting her to our families, you know, okay, if you like the way that she filmed your 12 year old doing a leap, you know, you should let her do your holiday photos and things like that. So building that trust for sure. And then not being afraid to put her name out there. Um, we've definitely done that quite a bit with between us um, and like I said she does a lot of our family photos and for a lot of um, of our kids definitely so okay anyone else I think it's like Ron said it's them offering the photos to me like I get all of my photos I get those marketing shots I get the little girl who kicked off her tap shoe and had the cutest look on her face. Like Ron captured it, sent it to us. There's one of three girls twirling that he took seven years ago. It's still on Google and it is the most popular thing and they're not doing a darn thing right, but they're laughing. And it's like, he edited that photo. He knew to send that to me and I have people still talking about that picture. So I think it's giving, like, giving the studio owner stuff like that that's going to keep a photographer around for sure. Yeah, our photographer um, even took it upon herself, even for one of our kiddos that wasn't buying pictures. We don't have very many little boys and he happened to be one of the only little boys and Stacy made sure to grab those photos just for me. He wasn't buying them. They didn't ask for them, but she knew that I could use that as a marketing purpose. So she did that for me, which made a really big difference as well. It's knowing when those marketing pictures are, are like those moments right? that we need. Yeah. yeah, I had a kid. I mean, it's just compassion too. I had a kid that came in, uh, it was two years ago, that had fallen down on her bike and completely road rash, her whole entire arms, everything. Mom did not want recital pictures taken, just group photo. And he was like, nope, we'll take them. I'll Photoshop them. And when she got them and saw that, she looked completely normal after you photoshopped them. I mean, she spread his name like wildfire to everybody. Oh my gosh, by recital pictures, by recital pictures, he's so amazing. So it just, you know, those little small things make such a huge difference. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I still have a couple more questions. And, and Mark Steelman has a question to everyone. And it's kind of an interesting question um, in that, um, um, he, you know, he, he's saying that he likes to do custom portraits of dancers in his photo studio, you know, not the volume photo day photos. And, um, what would motivate a studio owner to promote custom portraits to their dancers? Would they risk offending their recital photographer by promoting someone else? Um, and he also asked, would studio owners rent their walls to display work of, of custom photographers, you know, or take ads in their program? So there's a number of questions in here. And I, I think the first thing that I want to do is like, um, many of you already have a photographer who has a 
studio, okay? Um, and so I, I kind of want you to like answer this question and maybe more so in the line of like, how would you handle this if your photographer did not have a studio and did not offer, you know, these artistic portraits? Because that's really what he's talking about. If they did offer their artistic portraits, I don't think that, you know, you would, you know, allow an outsider to take them. I would hope not. Um, but if they didn't, you know, that's something that that uh, that your your photographer did not offer. Ah, you know, it's may, maybe something to consider. So, so what would motivate you to promote them, promote this to the, your dancers? Is your number one question out of that, and then the other questions as well. So, who wants to take it first? Let's start with you, Joe. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, if if my photographer that I was using didn't do artistic shots and someone came to me and, you know, did all the things that we had talked about, got to know my product and who I was and, you know, sold themselves to me, I would definitely be um, wanting to do that. Um, I think in today's, obviously that's why we're all on here, artistic dance photography for, for me um, is, is huge. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely think I would, and I don't know, I don't think I'd really have to, would it take much, at least for me and in my families to pitch it to parents and them to to really want it for their kids. So um, yeah, if, if you can get in with a with a dance studio that doesn't have a, a, a photographer that has a studio, that would be, you know, a, I think that there's definitely a need at lots and lots of studios for that. Yeah, I think it depends on your market too, because we're yeah. in, we're in Chicagoland. So, you know, there, there's studios everywhere and everybody does well at least in our area everybody does team shoots at the beginning of the year and they're always artistic um so it's like a, it's a thing up here but I think know your market like know if it's uh an area that the parents are willing to spend additional money on extra photos outside of their showcase like I'm in a wealthy area so my parents are happy to but they're I have a friend who te owns a studio and only like an hour north and her parents would never, ever pay for it. They barely pay for the showcase or the recital photos to the point where they started taking their own because the photographer wasn't making money. So I think you just have to know the area of where the studio is too. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, our parents, being in a low income area, our parents wouldn't pay for extras. Um, our photographer doesn't have a studio. She offers like many sessions of specialty things when she is able to. But I think just like I um, would feel if a child took a program or class that I didn't offer, then I don't feel I could be offended by them going somewhere else if I wasn't able to offer it. So I would expect my photographer not to feel offended if it's not something she's offering that somebody else did and that I shouldn't feel um, like I shouldn't promote it if it's something that we're not already getting from our current photographer. And I think to the, somebody asked again, would you be, would you be worried about offending? Not if I talked to the photographer. So if that's not something Ron did, I would ask him, somebody like somebody approached me, they do this. Would you like, do you want to do this? Or would you be okay with me doing that? Right. That's I would keep the trust of my photographer. I would just be honest and ask. Kim, you want to jump in on that or? Yeah, I mean, I kind of was going with what Leah said. I mean, you just need to communicate with your photographer and if he's willing to do the extra stuff and obviously you, you know, John Mark and I've been working together for so long that usually I can call him and say, hey, would you do X, Y, and Z? And he says, yes. But if he's not willing to do that, I think you can't offend somebody by going out and reaching out and finding someone that will do what you really need for you. Okay, and Gina? I completely agree with what everybody's saying. If you, it's, it's, it's the same. If you don't have something that you want, if you have, if you, I'm sorry, if you want something and they aren't offering it, I don't think somebody would be offended. I wouldn't be offended if, you know, somebody wanted to do ballroom, like I don't offer ballroom, like, great, go do that. Um, so yeah, just kind of what everybody else said for sure. Okay. Um, I'm getting so many cool questions here. I'm really digging this. Um, so Lynn Tyler King asked a question. Um, 
And again, I want to try and keep it short because I still have a few questions to get to and we're, you know, at the top of the hour now. We can keep going a little bit as long as you guys are able to. Um, um, and, and, and that is, uh, does your recital portrait photographer also shoot your live performances? So uh, let's, let's, let's start with you on that, Gene, and work our way around. And, 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 and uh, yeah, just... And, and what do you use those for, I guess, too? I guess that's really my question. So go ahead. Okay. So that we, we, yes, for me, it's yes. We use the same photographer for our recital photos. Um, and then she also comes, we do a showcase at the beginning of our competition season. She shoots all of that. Um, and then she also shoots at our rehearsals for our recital. And for me, those are my favorite photos. Kind of like everybody had said, they're the candid ones. But then she also shoots from the wings backstage during our recitals. So when all the lights are on and if we have fog or if we have the light change, um, and I've not always needed them, but it's really cool to have the option for them. And we actually had more parents buy her rehearsal and recital photos than I, honestly, than I thought. And for us this year too, we did have to have a fully masked recital. Um, this, I mean, I'm hoping that's just a one-time thing, but you never know. Um, so I was actually surprised at how many people bought all the photos. So yes, for me, it's kind of an all encompassing. She does everything for us. Um, and I've really never been super disappointed about it. So yes, we do everything with the one. Leah? Um, again, it comes back to my area. Um, would I love for her to be able to shoot my recital? Absolutely. Um, but for my area, people just don't have the funding to be able to um, pay for something in addition. So just to get her the once a year for the recital portraits is kind of pushing in my area. So it's, is not something we do. Um, but if I, maybe I was in a different area, I would absolutely take advantage of that as well. Okay. Kim. Um, we do not do live, uh, live photography for recital. We do for our, uh, Christmas, we have a big Christmas ballet production and we will have him shoot that. And we just use those. I mean, the parents buy them, but we use them mainly for marketing. Okay, and Jessica? Uh, we've done it in the past. Ron's come out during the dress rehearsal because it's easier for him to move around. Um, I like having them. I didn't really use them. So we, have, we didn't do it the past two years. Um, so yes, but if you are going to have them do it, I would do a dress rehearsal. And we've never even put them out to the parents. It was really just for my use for marketing. And I have used them for marketing, but they're not my go-to photos. The white okay. backdrop is my go-to. <laughs> it matches my marketing. Okay. Um, I, I, I still see some more questions here that are pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to go with another question from Angel Tisdale, and that is, you know, would you consider hiring one photographer, you know, for your recital portraits and another for like creative shots or maybe outdoor shots or, or something like that? And actually, I'm going to piggyback another question on there because uh, Dave McMahon um, uh, shoots dancers underwater. I know Martha Worth is on here as well. And she does it as well. And so, um, and we kind of like talked about this already about like, like doing the artistic studio shots if they didn't have the availability. But, you know, would you consider like using, you know, multiple photographers? You guys have already talked about that and said, you know, yeah, in the right situation, obviously we would. Um, so I kind of feel like uh, we've already answered that question, but, but let, let, and, and I feel like we already talked about like what Dave had to say too, even through the artistic, but when somebody does something really unique, like underwater, there's very few photographers, you know, literally in the country, you know, who, who, uh, who do that, um, you know, so, you know, how, you know, like, like, like in, in what way um, would, would that be interesting to you you know, that, that you would allow a photographer to do that with your dancers, I guess is the question. I would, if, if Ron didn't shoot underwater and you were in my area and you offered to do even just one of my kids 
as a free shoot and then post it. I would post it, the kid would post it. They would all see that. That's how I would generate it is free for one. And I would hire you if Ron didn't do it. Sorry, Ron. <laughs> that's what we do next. Anyone else? I'll just piggyback on that. I mm -hmm. think, um, like we said, having, you know, having that communication, if you have a photographer that you work with and, you know, is that something that they can offer or not, but at least for like, like Jessica had said in, in our area, um, in the Chicago land and it being, you know, we do competitive dance, so it's competitive, right? So any way for me to do something that nobody else has done and to stand out and to offer something in the art that is special for the group of kids, you know, that's yeah. what we're looking, you know, that's, that's the whole point of these artistic is we don't, we don't want it to be like, I mean, there's a place for that, but for what I'm looking for, I don't want it to be like every, you know, I want to stand out. I don't want it to be like everybody else's. So yeah, definitely. Okay. Anyone agreed. Else want to Just agreed with yes. Agreed. <laughs> Okay, so um, you know, like uh, I, I, to me, this this webinar is as much for dance photographers as it is for um, as it is for studio owners. You, you know, because uh, we want to get the uh, the message out to studio owners. You know that you know we we think that you can get more out of your photographer if you're using a dance photographer as opposed to somebody you know who's just you know, a photographer, you know, which is fine. But if you're able to get a dance photographer, I think it just takes everything to another level. Um, can each of you like just uh, say something, you know, uh, like speaking to studio owners who have never used a dance photographer and just say how valuable it's been, you know, to do that? I think okay. it's valuable for marketing. I never had any of those photos before and it was me taking them myself. And I'm, and I'm fine with taking some shots on my fancy iPhone these days, but they'll never compare to what he takes. And it's high quality. It's, you know, it's a good image that I can put on Facebook ads. I can put it on Google ads. And it's just, I mean, for my marketing alone, like that's all we do these days is Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and Google. And my, from the time that I didn't have a photographer till now, my like views on all of that, like completely went up. My enrollment went up. It was like all of it. I used it for postcards, brochures. I mean, he even took, we fully had to renovate our studio because it flooded during the pandemic. <laughs> super fun but he even shot what that for me he just took pictures of the studio so I could put it in my brochure um but the advantage to having a dance photographer I think is quality the advantage for me um a lot is in posing and just the unique poses that you can get from somebody who knows a little bit more about dance than your box photographer. So it is, it makes the kids happy and more excited and it makes the parents more excited because they're not just seeing your, you know, hands under the chin, typical poses. So I think there's just a lot more creativity behind having an actual dance background photographer. Yeah, I think for me, it was the comfort of being able to walk out of the room and knowing that he wasn't going to shoot a sickled foot and that he actually knew what a good tondu looked like because my sports photographer had no idea and he was shooting just all the way and not paying attention. And if I wasn't constantly watching and fixing and molding, we were getting awful shots. So, you know, I can walk out of the room and walk back and know that he's taken a really good arabesque photo of a five-year-old you know, yeah. and, and been patient with the child and, and the shock on their face when he says, you know, show me your tondu is sometimes priceless. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Leave. I like when Ron says, use your plie. <laughs> in a yeah. and throws your leg. Gina. Um, I think it's, it's the marketing aspect for us as well. Um, the more that I share the, the professional photos versus my fancy iPhone ones that I take backstage. 
um, when we use the professional ones of a leap or a turn or a leg or whatever it may be, or even if it's just a class photo, um, when we share it, more kids share it. And I've seen that too, especially in like the teen age, especially on Instagram, they're resharing our posts because it's a picture of their friend. And the more that I feel that we have the more professional photos, the more that the kids are willing to share them because, you know, they look cooler than my iPhone photos. Uh, but it's definitely the marketing piece. And I agree with Jessica. Um, our views have gone up substantially since we started using, I mean, I can even look back at our social media posts and I can tell like, Oh, right. There's when we started using the professional photos and you can see a shift. Yep. Um, and we ask people too, how did you hear about us? And people will say, I saw this really great photo on your Instagram post. And I'm like, yes. Okay, great. So for us, it's completely worth it. If I get one kid out of it, it's great for sure. Okay. Yeah, I and would Joe? say 40% oh, of ours comes from Facebook mm -hmm. from those photos. So. Yeah, I would piggyback on what everybody said. The marketing piece is huge for me. It's also something that I feel like I can offer sets me apart from other studios, right? I can offer my families this, these artistic shoots throughout the season with this re re renowned photographer. And then that leads to them feeling um, special. And I mean, I've had families do Christmas photos with Ron or they have a son in softball and they've done like, or I always play baseball. Uh, <laughs> I can tell I'm a dance teacher, but yeah, like they'll, they'll have action. Ron will do their son's action soccer shots or whatever. So, and that makes that family feel like through artistry, they've gotten this other, like they've gained something else. And so that is, is a gain for me as well. Okay. Um, we do have one more question. Uh, uh, Brian, you know, the uh, asking about the photo ambassador program that, that typically doesn't have anything to do with the, uh, the studios. Uh, Cause that's something that the photographers do. And, you know, the dancers usually come from a number of different studios. So they're not usually too involved in that. Um, Peggy Gray is asking about um, during a, uh, a shoot, during a class, you know, uh, how long would a photographer work with a class and how many images of each dancer would be expected? And I'll be honest, I'll kind of answer that for you since, since um, I've done that, you know, quite a bit. Um, and, and that's that, you know, you're really not in there a lot, you, you know, and, and you kind of just get the feel for what the class is like. Are they having a lot of fun? You know, does that mean you're going to get some like laughing classes? Uh, sometimes, you know, the classes are pretty strict, you know, and and, uh, and 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 so the kids aren't, you know, it, it's not going to be as much fun. And when they're really strict, it's like I'm only I just, you know, kind of sit in there for a few minutes, take a few pictures and then leave um, because it's, you know, we want to get some kind of like, you know, strict shots or whatever, but it's really more about having fun. Um, you know, but, you know, really when, when you're, t you're in a class, you're, you're not really there to, to take pictures of the dancers per se, because you're not going to sell those pictures to the parents. The, these, these are something that the, um, uh, that the studios can use for their own marketing, just like a couple of them have mentioned. Um, and, um, you know, so it's not important to get a lot of shotters, shots of, of, of all the dancers. You do want to try to, you know, catch as much diversity as possible, especially you know, if there's a boy in there, I, I forget who said that, Leah or, or Kim, you know, was talking about how she got a boy shot, which was, you know, kind of amazing. Um, so that kind of answers that question. Uh, he Heather Haney uh, asks, um, you know, how much would you pay for marketing images? So, so let's say you did need to bring somebody in to get these shots of your dancers in a class or, or you wanted to uh, uh, get a shot get some kind of a marketing shot, you know, to help you. And for some reason, you know, you don't use your recital portrait photographer, you know, again, I offer all that to my studios basically for free in exchange for letting me be their, their, uh, their dance recital portrait photographer. But, you know, is that something that, you know, you would be willing to pay for even with the idea that you have a recital portrait photographer, or would you just go through your recital portrait photographer for that? Or, we, or, or I guess I, I even throw on, would you pay your recital portrait photographer for that? I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it's hard to answer because you do it for me at, for no cost. Um, again, I think it depends on the studio, the area, and how, how big their studio is. Especially currently, we don't, I, I mean, 
we're not making millions here. Like we're doing this because we love to dance and you know, we love the art. So added expenses like that, especially for a smaller studio, it isn't necessary, especially in the age of the iPhone. So I don't know that I would pay money to, to have it done. I agree. I'm really small, um, especially my dance program. I, I, my competitive gymnasts actually make up a bulk of it. Um, would I love it? Yes, but financially, would I pay somebody to do it? It's not really cost effective for me right now. Um, I would pay for somebody to do it. <laughs> um, I know that John Mark would do it. Uh, I just haven't asked him, but um, I know he would do it for free and would sit and do whatever I could. But if I didn't have a photographer that wasn't willing to do it, I definitely would pay for it just for the sheer fact that we gain a lot of enrollment off of social media. And if I had those images in my hand to use, I would pay, I would pay for it. I don't know how much I would pay for it, but I've heard you know, within reason, I would, I would pay for those images. Okay, Joe. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like him said, I would, I would pay for it. I don't know how much, um, but I think for, for me, the end result, right? That big, beautiful leap with the city background is the end result. And that's what the parent will pay big bucks for whatever, whatever they, you know, that they're going to pay, they're, they're willing to pay, but the in-studio moments and being able to capture that, um, the day-to-day -day stuff is really what we do. And so I think being able to show that um, and celebrate that in a, you know, um, in that sort of way is, that would be really beneficial for my studio. But I think it like, it's not something a parent would pay for. So if, if you're trying to get in with the, with the studio, I think like what Ron does is like offering it because you know, it's going to benefit the studio owner, but I'm, you know, no parent is going to pay for it. I'm not going, you know, I think just make that as something you could do to, for them um, would be like hugely appreciated on our end. Yeah. Or offering that to get in with them. It yeah. would be huge. Exactly. exactly. All right. Gina, do you want to add anything to that? Um, we don't have, we haven't really like had this much. So honestly, I don't have too much to say about it, but just what everybody else is saying sounds about right. Yes. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much for uh, being a part of this. Um, I, I, I'd like to like uh, just turn it back to you one last time for each of you to just uh, add any final comments that you, you think maybe something we haven't talked about or asked about or, or, you know, just um, any encouragement that you have. Um, but uh, so thank you very much for doing this and let's just work our way around. Gina, do you have any final comments or just say goodbye to everybody? And um, No, this was awesome. And I know I've seen it in the chat a little bit. I know I brought up the ambassador program um, from, I, I saw somebody just say this. I wanted to touch on it really quick. From my perspective, every time that my kids post pictures from their ambassador shoots with Jenny, they always tag us and I always reshare it. And I've actually had probably four or five inquiries just this summer because this is our first summer of her doing it um, of kids wanting to join our studio because of this ambassador program so if it's a photographer that's thinking about doing it in an area that you know you could get at least 15 kids I completely say go for it because I've already reaped the benefits from it as well as I know as she has um, so I know that I was the one that brought that up so I wanted to just touch on that but I wanted to thank everybody it's nice to meet people from around the country that has the same thoughts and same struggles and the same views as everybody else. So it's been awesome. Okay, thank you. Leah. Um, yeah, it's definitely been pretty cool to hear everybody's thoughts. Like it even opened my mind of things to think about. Um, but I think for me, like communication is really big. And luckily I'm able to communicate with my photographer really well. But I would also say um, priority. I feel like Stacy always makes, you know, her loyal studios a priority before she starts taking everybody else. So she's reaching out to me and the other studios she normally shoots first before people come her way, which I appreciate because I'm not always on top of that. Um, and she's really patient and, and continues to communicate with me and any additional things that might come up, she communicates whether it's going to be for the whole studio or just a few kids that she might have in mind or anything like that. So, um, but thank you everyone. Okay, Kim? I kind of what everybody said, and I think it's important to have um, 
great customer service skills, compassion. Um, we always have those difficult parents and the photographer is super willing to make it right, whatever he has to do, even if we're not spending an extra couple hours with, with a certain student. Um, and just really connecting with with all of the parents and kids and um, just being just being willing to work and being flexible, I think is super important. Okay, thank you very much. Jessica. Um, I agree with what the other ladies said. I think, yeah, being open, being interested, asking questions um, to the studio owner or the teacher there and just like constantly trying to learn um, is big and also communication with the parents. If the studio owner never has to discuss a photo with a parent, I will keep you forever because I don't, like we don't have time. That's okay. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, I agree with everybody. Um, I, I, this was really um, helpful for me. Like Leah said, I think I, I gained some, some insight on things that I hadn't thought about before. Um, I think it's just to, to remember that, you know, as a, a studio owner, you know, we just, we love dance. Dance is just, it's, it's awesome. And to have somebody be able to capture that and um, make, be able to us to be able to have a way to showcase that how great this art form is and we you know find a photographer that has a shared passion um, and isn't interested like Jessica said and you're going to do the do the background and get to know what we're needing um as I think something that would would really be you know make a good team photographer dance photographer and studio owner so okay well thank you very much everybody I really appreciate it we're getting a lot of thank yous from the uh, attendees so um uh, thank you very much, and uh, we will be in touch. So thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.